Full Metal Alchemist, the 2003 version episodes, 11 through 19 review. Now that we've gotten the comparisons between the two out of our system, um, we're going to move forward and talk about this series kind of as its own, but still, I mean, how can you not compare it to the old one? I mean, instead of sitting around talking about which one's better, which one's worse, I want to talk more about how the two are clearly already deviating from one another, even though they haven't really hit that point in the series where they're supposed to deviate from one another, at least as far as I've heard. So far, the plot, the overarching plot in Brotherhood and the original series is um, very much the same. The pacing is different. There's a couple, like, I guess you would call them filler adventures, where we're building character and building relationship between the two brothers. And um, then there's a couple of different characters, a couple of new characters who I am um, thoroughly surprised to be seeing, uh, mostly because they're not in the manga or in the uh, Brotherhood series, which means that I know that they're new additions to the series. There's also a couple of character-defining moments that were not in the Brotherhood series, um, which kind of completely change relationships between certain characters and the entire character as a whole, too. Um, and, and I'll get into that in a little bit, but um, I just kind of want to start at the beginning from uh, where we left off. We have the Envy reveal. Now, originally Envy revealed himself right after killing Cornello. Um, in, in this series, it took him a really long time. It took a while for us to go back and visit Lior and check in and find out what Envy really looks like. And, um, I mean, so far the character Envy hasn't really shown us anything personality-wise besides him just being, like, sort of evil. <laughs> Pretty evil <laughs> when you get down to it. Um, but all around, that character is the same in, in what we've come to expect. I'm really interested to see what's going to happen with this guy because I know what happens to him in the Brotherhood series and um, seeing a different path for him will be really interesting because Envy was one of those characters that you kind of loved to hate and you hated that you loved him too and I know what he does to Hughes and all of that so um, I I'm not sure where the series, again, I'm not sure where the series is going to completely go off in a different direction. But um, if he still does the horrid crime that I expect him to do, then I imagine that the emotions will stay the same for that character. And um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see him kind of progress in a similar way and, and see what happens after that. I've always really liked Envy's powers. It's, it's very cool. And um, the, the things that he's able to pull off with that power. I mean, not just Envy. Obviously, there's shapeshifters in almost every series about magical creatures. So it's not as if it's a revolutionary idea. Um, kind of across the board, I usually like those characters just because they're perfect for those, like, oh my god, twist moments. So um, I really look forward to uh, Envy giving me additional oh my god twist moments in this series that I'm not expecting. So we have Dr. Marco and Dr. Marco I'm pretty sure was killed. I'm pretty sure Dr. Marco is dead in this series um, but they did the same thing I think in the original series where they in uh, Brotherhood I mean where they made us think that Dr. Marco is dead but then he came back and he was alive but maybe in this series he actually is dead. He played pretty much the same role um, as before. Um, and Ed now went to that went to that city to see him, kind of incidentally. Like they were looking for Dr. Marco and then they just happened to stumble across him, which was which was good. And um, that means they also stumbled across Scar, who is another character that um, we knew at the very beginning of the series and then halfway through the series we found out a lot about him, and that completely changed um, who he was as a character and what his path was as a character. So it's another character that I'm I'm sure is going to have a different role um, in the second half of the series than he did in Brotherhood, because you just gotta you gotta make up a new role for him if you're if you're 
you know, making up the end of the series, you know? So, um, I thought that was fantastic. And then, of course, the introduction of Armstrong, which... I love Armstrong. If you know anything about me, Armstrong is, like, my boy. I, I love laughing at him. And I'm so glad he's back. And something I've noticed kind of with most of the characters, most of the characters seem to have different voices. I know Roy definitely has a different voice. I'm pretty sure Armstrong has a different voice. Pretty much all of the characters have different voices except for Ed and Al, which I'm, I'm really thankful that they got the same two kids, or two women, rather, to, to voice Ed and Al because it would have been a different series, I feel, if they had had different voice actors. So, it does evoke a different feeling for me when I hear the characters talking, and I'm not going to judge which one's better, which one's worse, of course. I'm going to reserve all of the judging of which one's better, which one's worse for the end of the series. Maybe I'll do like a direct comparison video between the two, just to talk purely about that. But I think that, um, bringing Armstrong back into the series, and after it took so long for us to find him, um, I feel like he was introduced really early on in, in uh, Brotherhood. Um, I I'm glad to have him back, and it it's like, it's bringing back all of these nostalgic moments for me, and all this happiness, and I'm like, oh, this is so great, Armstrong is back, and of course I know it's coming, so that makes me less happy. <laughs> Dr. Marco told us about the Ishbalan massacre, and then they drop this bombshell on us about Roy. Roy killed Winry's parents, which I was initially like, what? Really? I feel like that's not true. <laughs> and then I went back and I checked and yeah, in Brotherhood, Scar kills Winry's parents. He wakes up in a, in a fever and he's confused and scared and he kills them because he thinks they're the enemy and he doesn't know what's going on. And that results in a really good, powerful scene between Winry and Scar later on where she has to forgive him. Um, in this series, Roy killed them. And that, it certainly heightens the evilness of the military and makes us feel mixed feelings about Roy because of this thing that he's suddenly done that that obviously he committed a lot of atrocities during the Ishbalan war or massacre massacre rather that everyone everyone committed horrible atrocities but this makes it so real and so close to home and it does make me feel differently about Roy as a character especially they they gave him that moment where he he tried to like he, he was about to kill himself shoot himself in the neck for that or the head, rather, and uh, Marco was able to talk him down and, and escaped because of it. Um, but it was it was really really interesting for to make that choice for that character for all of those characters really because it changes so many things and so many relationships. Um, and now Ed knows that Roy killed Winry's parents. Which is, which is crazy, which is completely crazy, I think. Unless I misinterpreted what happened. I'm pretty sure Ed knows now, and it, it kind of blows my mind, because it is a huge character-building sequence that completely changes the characters and their relationships. And I'm hoping to see more from that. That was kind of like the first big change that smacked me across the face. Everything else has been kind of like small plot things, introductions of little characters and that kind of stuff. Kind of all incidental and, and not that consequential, but this right here is huge. Another character who is brand new, um, that I, I'm looking back and I do not recall this character existing, is the president's secretary. I don't think we know what her name is. I just keep calling her the, the president's secretary, which I believe, you know, King Bradley's secretary, which means, you know, I don't even know what it means. It's this new character who popped up in the previous chunk of episodes, just briefly. And Ed had this weird moment where he looked at her, and then it ended. And then when Al saw her, he he heard her voice and he thought it was his mother's voice 
and Ed dismisses it as being crazy. You know, looking at her, she looks like their mom. And um, at the same time, another new character, another new female character was barely introduced, um, who Scar recognized as his brother's girlfriend or wife or sister or something like that. I don't know. Some female figure in his brother's life that looked like Lust. And um, I don't know <laughs> what that's about, but it definitely um, makes you think, makes you wonder um, <clears throat> what's going on with that. Why do why, why do these characters look like other characters? I mean, Scar's girlfriend is presumably dead, just because most Ishbalan people are dead. And obviously Ed Nell's mom is dead. And um, I, I, I don't know where that's going, but it's, it's worth noting that these characters exist and uh, people are recognizing them from other situations. Um, so when Ed and I went back to their home city and they were escorted by Armstrong, there were a couple of little filler adventures on the way there that I'm, I'm not really going to talk about, but um, once they got back to, um, back home and, you know, Ed got all his repairs done and then Al got all his repairs done, Al was having kind of like a little existential crisis. And this is something that, this is one of those things that I definitely remember from Brotherhood when I was watching and I was like, where did this come from? Al is just suddenly doubting his humanity. Just out of nowhere. For me, it came out of nowhere. Because um, Barry the Chopper, who we'll get to in a minute, um, mentions like, oh, maybe you're not even real. And Al's immediately like, oh my god, you're completely right! And I felt like it was out of nowhere. In this series, they're definitely exploring that a lot earlier. There's more pretense to it. So once he does get to that little existential crisis, where um, later on, when I imagine Barry the Chopper will bring it up, because that's part's canon, um, then it won't feel as arbitrary and out of nowhere, because Al is starting to wonder, like, are my memories real? They're kind of fading in and out, and I remember having friends, but I don't remember what the friends look like, and then I see them, and I don't know where the memories go. And it's a good, um, it's, it's, it's good for Al to have those kinds of character moments, because Al doesn't really get a lot of good defining character moments, um, because he is obviously a suit of armor, and he, he, even though the, the, movie, not the movie, the, the show is um, about the relationship between the two brothers. It is primarily about Ed. Ed is the main focus of the series. So often when Ed is striving for something really intensely, Al kind of gets pushed to the side and just being like, okay, yeah, totally, I'm, I'm with you. And so when Al does get these moments like this, it is, it is good to remind ourselves that he is human and he is imperfect and he does have doubts even though he like 100% believes in his brother he's a little bit he's still a kid and he's confused and he's upset about things and he doesn't understand necessarily so I thought that was good for um, for Al and um, it, it's something that I'm interested in seeing explored more in the next group of episodes and when Al was feeling like we should give up on the Philosopher's Stone, once he realized what went into making it, um, he was like, we should just give up, and Al was desperately trying to be like, no, no, we have to keep going, because, you know, Ed lost an arm and a leg, and that sucks, totally sucks, but he can go on living mostly normal, um, even without those body parts. Al really can't. <laughs> and so his desperation for the Philosopher's Stone is a little bit more um, intense and in the foreground. So he wasn't prepared to give up on something like that so quickly. He wanted to find an alternate explanation. And it was interesting to me that Ed wouldn't listen to Al. Um, and it took Maria Ross coming in and 
encouraging them and um, you know talking them down from like this this cliff they had walked towards <laughs> to um, to make him kind of just like okay get his get his rearing gear basically um, maybe he just needed to hear it from someone else who wasn't coming from a place of desperation but I don't know um, that could also be contributing to what Al is going to be experiencing later on. <laughs> Episode 19 brought us deep into plot, and um, this is where things really start going. Um, I remember this entire sequence of episodes um, in Brotherhood when they break into the uh, laboratory and they find all of these <laughs> these guys in suits of armor, or not in, not guys in suits of armor, souls in suits of armor, who um, are guarding this this philosopher's stone, creating underground lair, and um, greed is there, and um, Ed and Al get themselves mixed up in some crazy shit as usual, always oh, usual. And then of course, what comes directly after that is devastating. Um, and, you know, weirdly, I, I remember Barry the Chopper, the, um, the suit of armor guy, but weirdly, it totally didn't even click in my head that the serial killer that we encountered in, like, episode five was Barry the Chopper, <laughs> even though he said straight up that he was Barry the Chopper. It was, I don't know why, it just did not occur to me until I saw Barry the Chopper in his armor form, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was, that was a fun little moment of like, duh, realization for me when I saw that happen. And um, that, that, that adds an interesting dimension to that, not necessarily a dimension to the character, because the character itself is not that interesting until later on. On the surface, the character is not that interesting, but that certainly changes the changes the relationship between Ed and Barry the Chopper, which is uh, not a relationship that you would ever expect to need to explore. Weirdly, I find myself enjoying this show the most when I notice something incredibly different about it, like the the president's secretary character, or Roy killing Winry's parents, or you know, just just the the moments that jump out at me is like, what? Oh, that's a new thing. Like, because, as I've said before, this is like re-watching watching an entire series, but different. Because it is a different series. And I'm loving the surprising moments that catch me off guard and kind of weird me out and then change my thinking about the character. So, if you have done this, if you've watched both series, then I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, if you're like me and you appreciate that kind of stuff. If you've only seen one of the two series, then I definitely recommend watching them both. And some people have said that you should even watch the two of them at the same time, where you switch back and forth, you know, watch this series at the beginning because of the, because of the character moments in the explanation, and then the other series because of pacing and blah blah blah, like to go back and forth. And that, that's an interesting concept, I think, but... I'm really liking all the new stuff that I'm experiencing in this show, and I'm really excited to keep going. Um, the next two videos of Full Metal Alchemist from me will be um, watching 2021, 20, 22, and then 23, 24, and 25. And I expect I know what's going to happen in those six episodes, but I'm going to be looking for the weird, different stuff, and I'm really excited. I'll see you next time for episodes 20, 21, and 22. Bye!